celebrated tomorrow. As a precursor to that conversation, my colleague Hadia Mosiwa had a conversation with Edith Kabesime, who is the wildlife campaign manager at Wildlife Wild Animal Protection. I leave you with that. Thank you very much, Edith Kabesime, who is the wildlife manager at the uh, Wild Animal Protection. So, what uh, would you say is the current crisis? that is facing wildlife, not only regionally, but maybe globally? Uh, of course, globally, and Africa specifically, uh, it used to, the world used to team with a lot of wildlife, both in terms of populations, but also species. And scientists are telling us, and we have also seen it with, I think, with our own eyes, that uh, animals have declined over a period of time. Uh, for instance, in Africa, we know elephants have almost been poached uh, to, to extinction. We have poached our rhinos to extinction uh, because of the demand for traditional medicine mainly, because the horns for rhinos are believed to treat certain ailments, especially for men. Uh, if we are talking about uh, lions, it is the same story. Our lions have lost almost 90% of their original range. Uh, to an extent that I think around now 26 countries in Africa still have some lions, but even the numbers are so low. So we are talking uh, a crisis that is at scale, where on a daily basis, trillions of animals, I mean, on a daily basis, millions of animals are being killed uh, they are being extracted from their natural habitats and they are being traded uh, to meet demand, demand for exotic pets, demand for entertainment, uh, demand for food, but also demand for, I mean, fashion, because lots of animals, like elephants, elephant skins are used a lot in, uh, in, the, in the boot industry. For instance, in the United States, in Japan, uh, Elephant skins are a, big, are a big thing. So there are lots and there are big, big, big demands that are being placed on these animals. And that is the crisis we are talking about. And would you say there is a connection between the climate change that we are experiencing and maybe the wildlife poaching that has been going on for centuries and also the wildlife trade that we are also experiencing that is globally growing at a very alarming level? Climate and the poaching and the generally I mean, the entire wildlife crisis we are talking about. Yes, of course, all these things are interconnected. Let's think about the Congo Basin, or let's think about the Amazon. Uh, of course, those two big ecosystems are referred to as the lungs of the planet. A lot of deforestation has gone on in these two ecosystems, the Amazon and, uh, and the, the Congo Basin, the forest in the Congo Basin. Uh, of course, when forests are removed, we have destroyed the habitats for wildlife. If forests are removed, we have destroyed what we call the lungs for the, for the planet, meaning uh, the, for, we, the, 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 the planet no longer has capacity to absorb a lot of uh, pollutants that go into the atmosphere from industries, from livestock, uh, from... Um, I mean, from, uh, from the transport sector, because all these poisonous gases end up in the atmosphere. But because we have removed the forests, we have reduced the forests, we have destroyed the, hab the wildlife habitats, then, of course, the planet is warming up. We have talked about the temperatures rising and the places like Mount Kenya losing their snow-capped peaks, Mountains like Renzori losing their snow peaked, uh, peaks. So all this is because the globe is heating up because of the impact of deforestation. So when that happens, of course, now that is climate change, when the temperatures go rise, we have seen frequencies of fires in the Amazon itself. We've seen increased frequencies of fire in the Australia. We've seen increased frequencies of fire in the US. And even back home here, we are experiencing a lot of heat. I've never been to Nairobi, and it is this hot. So all that is climate change. So when all that happens, fires will, of course, displace wildlife. 
fires will directly kill wildlife. We have done a lot of rescues, for instance, in the Amazon, where your fires have become, I mean, an annual event. So it is sort of a it is cyclic. We are removing the forests, the temperatures are rising, the frequencies of fires are going up, animals are being impacted because they, either, they are either burning in the fires or they are being displaced. So it is cyclic and all this is causing animal suffering and of course uh, impacting on our ecosystems, yeah, impacting biodiversity and the planet in general, including ourselves. And how big is the impact of animal trade when we look at it globally? Because well, we know there is the illegal animal trade and the legal, but how, how bad is this impact of the trade generally as we speak? Of course, as I said, animals are being extracted from the wild. And the reason they're being extracted is actually for commercial purposes. And that is the trade we are talking about, which is so huge to an extent that some uh, scientists have put it at, in terms of uh, billions, that it's a multi-billion dollar business connected to trade in arms, connected to trafficking of people, connected to uh, money laundering, so, and even trade in drugs. So it's sort of, it's, a, it's connected to all those other uh, global uh, international crimes, which I've just enumerated. So that's how big it is. So when it gets to that, then that's when you see species like elephants have almost been poached to extinction because of their ivory, because of their skins, and so many other parts that are demanded globally. If you are talking about lions, lions, they used to roam all over Africa almost. But as we speak, as I say, they have lost, they have almost disappeared in many of the countries. We are still hanging on uh, a few numbers in Kenya, in Uganda, in uh, Tanzania, and a few countries in Southern Africa. In fact, right now we have more lions in captivity in Southern Africa than they used to be in the wild. So that's how big the problem has become that we have even uh, converted these animals into commodities, whereby we extract them from the wild and uh, we keep them in cages so that we can breed them very fast and uh, get more profit from them with due, uh, without even thinking about their welfare as individuals. So it's that big. And of course it is fueled by, by it's perpetuated by, and supported by our national laws, our national policies, but even policies at international level are also supportive of these practices. Say you'll find in Kenya, as an example, Kenya, uh, whereas Kenya can be one of those countries you can say is um, a champion when it comes protecting Africa's wildlife. But I think there are still loopholes and there are still gaps that could be filled. For instance, wildlife farming, uh, keeping animals in captivity is still going on in Kenya and it's allowed under the Kenya law. Uh, breeding, for instance, snakes for trade, breeding tortoises for trade, breeding uh, uh, what are crocodiles for, 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 for export, and ostriches. All this is going on, and these animals are kept in captivity in environments which are not theirs. So that is what the global trade is doing to our wildlife, that they have been converted into just mere commodities, as though they do not have lives just like us. I know you've mentioned we are doing well as a region, Kenya, Uganda, but there is more to be done. So what would you say is the clarion call as we uh, prepare to celebrate for the World Wildlife Day on Friday, tomorrow? First of all, we need to look at it uh, at three levels. At individual level, at um, national level, but also at international level, because all those levels interact and they are all impacting on animal welfare and conservation in one way or the other. So at community level, me and you, uh, it's our responsibility to protect these animals. And where we see 
uh, infringements being committed against wildlife, I think it's our responsibility to come out and make it visible. Just like I'm here, this is a corporate entity, but it has given me this space to be able to educate the public and call upon those that are in responsible spaces uh, to know that it's their responsibility to protect animals. So that is at personal level, but also not to buy, for instance, if you are thinking about buying a parrot or buying uh, a chimpanzee or a baboon as a pet in your house, if you're thinking about buying um, uh, a medicine that is made from animal parts, I think we should first think twice. At personal level, that's a simple action I think we can take, but also to speak for those animals. Like tomorrow we'll be with artists. They are speaking at personal level to put these messages across. At national level, government level, uh, of course our governments are the custodians uh, of our policies and laws and all that. As I said, for instance, Kenya has, still has a big role in terms of um, ending some of the practices like captive breeding of uh, some of the species for trade, for export. Whether it is for educational purposes, whether it's for research, whether it's for trade, at the end of the day it is trade and inherently wildlife trade. It is cruel, it causes suffering, but it also impacts on um, on, 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 on nature in general. So that is the, the call I would make uh, in the kind of direct to government. Uh, in terms of at national, at international level, uh, Friday is the birthday, 50th birthday, tomorrow's site is, we reach the fifth floor. We call it the fifth floor. 50 years is no mean feat. Uh, while it's a mechanism that was set up to regulate trade, 50 years down the road, uh, can they put up the uh, heads in the air and say we've been successful in regulating trade? If that was the case, then we wouldn't be talking of animal suffering, we wouldn't be talking of poor animal welfare, we wouldn't be talking of decli continuous decline in terms of animal populations and, and species themselves. So I think for me it should be a time for CITES and the, and, and, and the governments which are the signatories to this convention, the 188 countries that are signatories to this convention, to know that actually it is now the high time to stop and really reevaluate whether trade in wildlife is needed. Because trade means commodifying and we are commodifying beings which are like us, beings which are sentient, which have feelings, which have emotions, and uh, really we are saying wildlife, whether trade, whether legal or illegal, is not justifiable and it should be put to an end.